Good afternoon. We are the Master Mechanicals, and we're here today to present our design presentation number one for our hovercraft design for our term eight project. So our group members consist of myself, Greg Williams, Justin Tibbs, Brandon Pilgrim, Josh Boyd. So here's an overview of the presentation that we're going to give today. Uh, we're starting off with the problem statement, uh, design constraints, background research, uh, general hovercraft design, uh, then we'll get into our hull and skirt designs. We'll also talk about our controls uh, being used to control the hovercraft, the accessories, the uh, design calculations that were used, or going to be used, and the conclusion. So a problem statement is to design and fabricate an operational hovercraft. The hovercraft will have to have surveillance capabilities. We have an estimated budget of $500 with $250 reimbursed by the engineering faculty. So design constraints that we are faced with for this project is the maximum lift that we can generate from our propeller. This then in turn determines the weight of our hovercraft, uh, the cost of fabrication, the uh, parents' availability for our hovercraft, uh, time constraints of fabrication, and safety during use. So some background research on the hovercraft. The uh, hovercraft operates based on lift and propulsion. Uh, if there's too much airflow, you have a higher altitude and the stability is weakened. Uh, if there's not enough airflow, the hovercraft will not get any lift and therefore not move off the ground. As you can see from the picture on the right, the air blows downward from the lift, the lift propeller, which fills up the skirt with air. Then that will lift the hovercraft off the ground. The back propulsion motor will determine the steering and forward and reverse of the hovercraft. Uh, some background research, we looked into three or four different types of hovercrafts that are, that are currently in use. Some were built over in Europe and others were built in the state. Uh, the first one is the military issued hovercraft. As you can see, that uh, it has a cylindrical shaped front and it's, for military purposes it's used to carry passengers only. Uh, the Indian Griffin hovercraft is the world's largest hovercraft. Uh, it is used to carry passengers as well as additional payload besides. Uh, the Iranian hovercraft is also military and but it, the difference between this one and the original was that the shape is more of a helicopter shape and, and not, fully, uh, not fully cylindrical like the rest. Uh, the Mercier Jones Future Hovercraft is the newest stall of hovercraft. Uh, it was built in Chicago. Uh, the Mercier Jones Future Hovercraft takes a body stall design different than the other three. Uh, both propulsion motors as well are also in different locations. So for our general hovercraft design, for our purposes, we will need to use the skirt, the lift and propulsion motors, a fin along with the rudder, and instead of a radar on our design, we will use a video surveillance camera system. All right, so right now we're moving to our selection criteria. So when it came to the selection of our components, we based it on five different items. is our, our weight, our ease of use, our cost, our product availability, and our time. And all components, when it comes to our design matrices, are going to be ranked out of 20 points. And for our hull selection, we're here we have three hull material options. We have aluminum, uh, molded plastic, and styrofoam slash foam board. And right here you see our hull selection design matrix. So if, when you look at the matrix, uh, for the aluminum, we ended up with a total of 80 out of 100. For our molded plastic, we had 50 out of 100, and for our star foam, we had 95 out of 100. So, which means we're most likely going to go with star foam for our hull. And another, another section of the hovercraft that we had to choose for is our, uh, our skirt. So, we had three choices we had a bank skirt, a finger skirt, and a combination of both. So, the bank skirt is the simplest design, uh, the both design and manufacture, and it's the best suited for our multi, multi terrain. Uh, our finger skirt is a little more complex, uh, it will, will take a lot more time to uh, design and build a finger skirt. Uh, this the finger skirt is best suited for light racing hovercrafts uh, because it has low coefficient of drag. And design also requires the use of an air chamber to even distribute the air into each finger of the skirt. And the bag finger skirt, this one is a more complex skirt. Uh, design incorporates the best of both the bag and finger skirts, so it end up with low drag and multi terrain capability. And right here you see our design matrix for our skirt selection. So bag skirt, we give a 100 out of 100. Our finger skirt was 70 out of 100. And the bag, bag and finger skirt was 60. Basically, 
biggest reason for a bag of finger screw to be 60 is just that we don't really have enough time to build a bag of finger screw. It's really complex. So next up we have our control section. So for this section we have four different options available. We looked at video control, uh, Arduino, a control board, and the RC control. <coughs> so based on the five categories mentioned by Brandon, we rank each option based on their uh, availability, weight, ease of use, cost, and the time that we had for this short project. And this came up with the RC control. It also was a good option for us as we've already got experience with RC controlling. <coughs> Next we have our motors. So as uh, Justin mentioned in our background research, there's a number of different ways to uh, design the hovercraft based on two motors on the back where the speed can be changed in each motor individually or you can have two motors with fins and rudders to control the aircraft for steering or you can go with the simplest design with one motor with a fin to control the hovercraft. So here is the <coughs> design matrix and <coughs> based on the five categories it came out that we would go with this sim simply, simple design and that is the one motor with a fin. So then we decided, had to decide on a camera system. So we had three different options. We could go with a wireless live feed or a recordable camera system and then a combination of the both. <clears throat> so for the camera system, we ranked each option and then we kind of decided that it would be important for our hovercraft to have both of these capabilities. Therefore, it creates a redundancy in our system. So if the hovercraft ever failed to record the data, we also had our, our live feed that would give us the opportunity to react on a situation immediately. The design calculations will then be uh, determined so we can size our hovercraft. So first we have our weight. Uh, that's basically dependent on how much accessories and our camera system and that will determine what is required to lift the vehicle off the ground. So then from there, the lift provided will be based on the size of the motor and propellers that we purchase. And the drag force acting on the hovercraft, such as external aerodynamic drag, momentum drag of the lift system, cushion drag and skirt drag. This will also help us determine the propulsion motors on the back. And the last one is thrust. The power produced by the thrust fans will overcome the drag force. Uh, so for our design calculations, we calculated our lift force. Uh, we had to calculate the cushion pressure, the cushion flow rate, and the lift power that is required from our lift motor. Uh, for our drag force, we had our aerodynamic drag, our momentum drag, and our skirt drag. Uh, for the thrust force, and we had to manipulate the thrust force equation to get the density speed in the area. So in conclusion, uh, for our next step is move on to the detailed design process of our project. We have to determine our lift and drag characteristics and determine an estimated weight and how much, we will, and how much lift we can generate with our motor. We need to calculate the size and shape of each of the components that will meet the lifting capacity that we desire. And we have to enter into the manufacturing phase of the project and begin testing the design we have generated. Thank you. We did our whole presentation, like all.